All right, folks, the mast is on the ground. Uh, it's not going to stay on the ground too long. We are actually going to get this up a little taller on some sawhorses or something eventually, but this is what we had to do for right now. And, uh, yeah, we have some projects out here for sure. I'm going to be rebuilding the furler. We're going to be replacing all of this standing rigging. Got to put a new VHF antenna on the top, new VHF wire. I uh, have to rewire the mast light. There's, there's a lot of work to be done on this mast, but we're not going to start on that just yet. We are going to turn our attention to those chain plates and see if we can get those off, Tammy. What do you think, baby? Are they going to come off easy? Please say yes. Yep. Oh, things are looking generally weird out here. Ah, oh, look at that void where the mast used to stand. Yeah, it's weird when we take the mast down. But it is kind of nice in the summer when there's lots of storms that I feel like you have a less lessened chance of being struck by lightning. Yeah. So that's one good thing about it. Yeah, those are the chain plates. So these are carriage bolts holding everything in. And there is a square hole or five square holes in each of these chain plates. Um, so we're going to go on the inside and see if we can crack those nuts loose on the back side. And uh, see how difficult these are going to be to get off. Tamby said it's going to be very easy, so uh, we will see, folks. Okay, now here's the situation in here. Uh, as you can see, everything is taken apart. So we have fairly easy access to all the bolts. There are five per chain plate. So one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one is, you know, kind of hard to reach up there inside the bulwark. But it is in there. Uh, so we are just going to, we're going to start trying to take these off and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Let's just start with this one. Got all of my various wrenches hung on this one for easy access. And I think the nuts are gonna come off fairly easily after soaking them all in PB Blaster multiple times. There's one. One chain plate is loose. Let's see if we can... Hardware's in there pretty good. Let's pound on that a little bit. Look at that. One loose chain plate. Don't see any kind of uh, real obvious devastating damage on the back of this one. But one thing I'm going to do is we're going to take these home and uh, I'm going to clean up the back side of them. And uh, I'm really hoping to see some kind of really bad crevice corrosion because that's going to make me feel that much better about spending so much money on these brand new chain plates. So I'm really hoping for some, some real drama when we check these out closely at home. All right, well, that was pretty easy to get off. Hopefully the, the other seven come off just as easy. All right, so I'm working on the port side over here. And it's going pretty easy with the exception of a couple areas like this side. These bolts are right up against this board. And that one way up there is going to be a real challenge. Tambia is over here pounding away, taking out her anger on these chain plate bolts. Okay, I'm ready. Thank you. 
the inside of our boat now kind of reminds me of that final scene from Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> Do you get the joke? Yeah. yeah. Uh, some of these were real tough, especially these right beside this board here. A few of them were like just completely covered in epoxy. Having to chip all of that stuff off to get access to those was very difficult, but we got them. Uh, this wall over here took a bit of cosmetic damage in the struggle, but we did it. All right, now we just got to go outside and bang them. Bang them off, Tamby. Okay, let's go. All right, here's your, here's your chain plate persuader. Drop it. There you go. Spin it all over. Oh. What were the last words you just said, Tammy? I don't want to drop it. <laughs> all right. Mm, it just it needs to go out. Mm. Oh. Spin it all the way upside down. Yeah. yeah. Now, now pry from the top using more. There you, there you go. I'm getting the technique now. Okay, well here are all of the old chain plates. Um, looking at them, you know, there's certainly a lot of discoloration and such as that, but I don't see anything that looks like an impending catastrophic failure, you know? No cracks or anything that even remotely looks like a crack. I still may go home and kind of polish a couple of these up just to see if we may be able to find some, you know, some damage, but I don't know. It actually looks like we might be able to keep these as a spare, maybe? I don't know. But here's the new ones. There's the whole set of brand new, shiny, expensive, electro-plated chain plates ready to go on. Yep. Nice job, Tamby. Thanks. That was fun. Mm-hmm. Nice yeah, you just like beating things with hammers, don't you? Yeah. I should know. I never beat you with a hammer. Okay, we are back home now, and I wanted to just kind of show you some more details about these chain plates that we took off the boat. Now, one of them, uh, actually the one I would consider to be the worst of the bunch, I have polished up uh, kind of the worst couple of holes in it just to see what the corrosion was like. And it turns out that there's really not that much corrosion. Check them out. Here are all eight chain plates that came off the boat. You can see the ones on the right have the bend in the top. And then the ones on the left are just straight chain plates. They're all generally the same length. They all have five bolt holes. And this one here on the left is the one that I polished up. As you can see, sort of around the holes is where the worst corrosion is. And that's probably because that's the same place where the uh, caulking was and that just, uh, sort of starved this stainless steel of oxygen and that's a big cause of corrosion but as you can see around these bolt holes which would be the most uh, likely places for there to be some bad damage there's really not too much going on this is the back side of the chain plates and this is sort of what the front side looks like and I did kind of polish up the front side as well but overall, I feel like, you know, these could have probably stayed on the boat <laughs> uh, just as far as their general visible condition is concerned. However, you know, with stainless steel, um, you know, there is still a likelihood that there could be some damage inside this metal that is not really apparent on the outside. So that's why it's a good idea to replace, you know, hardware such as this 
on a somewhat regular basis 10 or 15 years or something like that is sort of the lifespan on stainless rigging generally speaking uh, although I believe that these chain plates have probably been on the boat since the boat was built and the boat is a 1978 model so uh, it's quite likely that these chain plates are 45 years old so even though there wasn't any real uh, interesting or catastrophic damage you know on the back side of these chain plates that I was really hoping for um, you know, it's still good that these things are replaced. You know, the boat's going to be so much better with new chain plates and new standing rigging. And that's exactly what we're continuing to work on this summer. So uh, next we're going to be installing the brand new chain plates. And then after that, we'll be uh, going after the rest of the standing rigging and some other mast related projects. Yep. Alrighty. Well, I guess that wraps this one up, folks. See you in the next one. Hi there everybody, this is Ben with one more little add-on to the end of this video, and I am here real time, so this video will be releasing tomorrow. And uh, just wanted to thank a few patrons that have come on board. We have Aqualife64, Sean and Sylvia, and also Robert McCracken. Thank you guys so much for becoming new patrons. We really appreciate it, and it is a huge, huge help. So thank you very much, guys. And I also want to thank a few people who have sent us things from our Amazon wish list. I have filters. This is basically for our drinking water system. And uh, those filters are good for, you know, six months or something like that. So we definitely need a new set. I don't know exactly who to thank for this one. Uh, but thank you nonetheless. We really appreciate it. I have a can of WD-40 dry lube here. And this is from Victor Dodier. I hope I'm saying your last name right there, Victor. What we use this stuff for is basically for the sail track and also the uh, track that is in our uh, head sail furler. Um, you know, there's some other really expensive products out there that basically, you know, makes those sail tracks nice and slick. But this does just as good of a job and it's like, I don't know, one tenth of the price. So thank you very much, Victor. I also have a couple tubes of 4200 right here. We have used all of our caulking up on uh, recent projects, but Mariula Lee has uh, replenished our stock. So we very much appreciate that. Thank you very much. Let's see, I also have a few things from Joe Johnson. And this is for uh, our, up, our upcoming bottom job that we're doing, and also for our uh, flag halyards, which are basically falling apart under their own weight. So we have a couple new lengths of rope here for our flag halyards, and also a couple rolls of really good tape that we're gonna be putting to use very, very soon as we refresh our boat's bottom job. And then finally, I have this box right here that is full of yoga blocks. There we go. Look at all these things. These are foam yoga blocks. Now what we're going to be using these for is uh, whenever we secure the new dinghy on deck. This is going to basically be, uh, you know, a nice, soft, cushiony barrier between the dinghy and the deck. So we're going to be able to strap the boat down against these foam yoga blocks. And that should help everything stay uh, nice and secure. And I don't... I have either lost the note for the, uh, for the yoga blocks or... Or there wasn't a note included, so uh, I don't really know who to thank for that, but um, thank you very much. All of this stuff is super duper helpful. Everything on our Amazon wish list has to be purchased one way or another before we depart. So it's very, very helpful to have you guys contributing to the cause. It, uh, it makes a huge difference, and we really, really appreciate it. Uh, sorry, it's just myself right now. Uh, the girls are off uh, doing their own thing, so uh, I'm here. And it is getting cold, folks. I know you can't see out the garage door back there, but the leaves are falling right now. And it's getting cold. You see me in my little jacket here, so what that means is it's getting really close to time for us to get the heck out of here because uh, we have grown very, very con, uh, very fond of skipping winter. So yes, the weather changing is our cue to uh, wrap up our projects. 
get the boat splashed, and head south. That's what we intend to do here really shortly, but thank you so much for watching this video. We really appreciate it, and we will see you in the next one.